Jai Hind children. Welcome to today's class. Today we are going to study about the new chapter Limits and Derivatives. This chapter is an introduction to calculus, a branch of mathematics. It mainly deals with the study of change in value of a function with respect to the values in the web. Let us see what the fundamentals of limit. The concept of limit is arrived when a function is not defined. Very important when a function is not defined at a particular point. So, we are trying to find some nearest values of that point. For example, consider the function consider the function fx equals x square minus 4 divided by x minus 2. I am going to find the value of the function at x equal to 2. Let fx be a function. This is the domain and this will be the range of the function. Consider a value from the domain as x equal to 2. When x equal to 2, what happens to the function f of x or f of 2? f of x becomes equal to f of 2 equal. Substitute the value for x as 2, you get 2 square minus 4 divided by 2 minus 2 equal. That is 4 minus 4, 0 by 2 minus 2 also 0, which is not defined. Not defined. So, when the function take the value 2 from the domain in the range, the value is not different or we can't see a value here, not defined value. In such a case, a not defined value never comes to the range of the function. So, in such a case, we need to find some values which are nearest to the value 2. So, I am going to make a further simplification in this case. The given fx can be written as fx equals x square minus 4 divided by x minus 2 can be rewritten as factorized we get x minus 2 into x plus 2 comes to the numerator a square minus b square the whole divided by x minus 2 so that this x minus 2 x minus 2 get cancelled the remaining comes as x plus 2 and now the function now becomes equal to f of x equals x plus 2 in this case, if you substitute the value for x as 2, now if you substitute the value for x as 2, you get f of x equal to f of 2 equals 2 plus 2 equal to 4. Now, the value of the function 2 becomes equal to 4, becomes equal to 4 when we factorize or simplify the given expression. I am going to find some values which are nearer to 2 and on the left side of 2. Consider a value which is nearer to 2. Consider the value on the number line. This is the value 2 and the value 2 returns the value 4. Consider a value which is nearer to 2 but on the left side of 2. Here I am going to take a value at 1.9. What happens when x becomes equal to 1.9? f of 1.9 becomes equal to, substitute the value, this is your function now, f of x equal to x plus 2 is the original function after the simplification. Now, substituting the value here, f of 1.9 becomes equal to 1.9 plus 2, which is 3.9. So, when x becomes equal to 1.9, the function returns the value 3.9. Consider a value which is some more closer to the value 2. That is 1.99 I am going to take. What happens when x becomes equal to 1.99? f of 1.99 becomes equal to 1.99 plus 2 which is 3.99. Remember, 3.99 is a number which is some more closer to this value 4. 
Consider one more number which is closer to 2. That is, I am going to consider the number 1.999. What happens when x becomes equal to f of 1.999 equals? The original function is x plus 2. Now, 1.999 plus 2 which is equal to 3.999. A number which is somewhere closer to the value 4. I am going to write here as 3.999. Now, you can see that the value approaching or the function returns the value which is closer to 4. Consider there are some numbers which are on the right side of 2. Let a number can be taken as 2.01. I am going to consider number 2.0. Sorry, 2.01 here. 2.01. What happens to f of f of 2.0? 0, 1 equals the original function is x plus 2 becomes 2.01 plus 2 which is 4.01 so when x becomes 2.01 the function returns the value 4.01 consider a value which is equal to 2.001 then the function returns the value 2.001 plus 2 which is 4.001 I am going to consider a number f of 2.1. f of 2.1 becomes equal to 2.1 plus 2 which is 4.1. So, suppose if the value for x is 2.1, the function returns the value 4.1. From this, you get a clear idea that as the value of x approaches to 2 or goes nearby to 2, the value of the function also approaches to the number 4. It approaches to or it, it is a number which is an error to 4. This happens when the function takes the value which is on the left side of 2. What happens when the function takes the value on the right side of 2? In that case also you can see that as the value of the function approaches to 2 from the right side. 2.1, 2.0, etc. From the right side, you can see that the value, the returned value also approaches to the number 4. 4.1, 4.01, 4.001, at last it reaches 4 itself. So, even though the function is not defined at this point, after simplification, you can find some values which are nearer to the number 2. So, as the number on the left side approaches to 2, it approaches to the fixed value 4. And as the number approaches to the value 2 from the right side, then also the value is approaching to the fixed number 4. Thus, it is clear that as x approaches 2 from the left side, the fixed value tends to 4. x approaches 2 from the left side means when the value of x reaching 2 from the left side. Symbolically, we can write it as limit x tends to uh, 2 minus f x. 2 minus f x means that the function approaching 2 from the left side of 2. Then it returns the value 3.9, 3.99, 3.99, 3.99, 3.99, etc. At last, it tends to the value 4. So, limit x tends to 2 minus f x equal to 4. This is what we call as the left hand limit. Left hand limit means that the value of the limit when it approaches the value from the left side. Similarly, limit x tends to, when approaching 2 from the right side, we can see that limit x tends to 2 plus a factor. That is, approaching the limit from the right side of the function or right side of the value 2. Then also the function returns the value 4.01, 4.001, etc. approximately equal to 4. This is called as the right hand limit of a function. Now we can see what the definition of limit. If x approaches a, then f x approaches l. If x approaches the fixed number a, then f x approaches the function approaches the fixed number l, where l is the real number, then l is called the limit of the function f x. As in the example, when x approaches 2 either from the left side or from the right side when x approaches 2 the function f x approaches the fixed number 4 as the illustration 
generally we can say that if x approaches the function or the value a then f x approaches the value l in such a case l is called the limit of the function a symbolically a limit x tend to a f x that is the value of a x approaching a then by that time the function returns the value l symbolically we can write as limit x tend to a f of x equal to l if x approaches a from the left side we can call it as limit x tend to a minus f x and that also will be l and if x approaches a from the right side we can call it as limit x tend to a plus f x and that also let it be l thus the left hand limit limit x tend to a minus f x equal to the right hand limit limit x tend to a plus f x both will be equal to the fixed number l and in such a case we can say that the function or the limit exists in such a case we can say that the limit exists so when the limit exists the left hand limit as well as the right hand limit becomes equal then we can say that the limit exists now we are going to study the algebra of limits let f and g be two real valued functions you know what real valued functions are whose limit exists then in order to find the limit of sum of two functions it is equal to limit of the first function fx plus limit of the second function gx so for to find the limit of the sum of two function it is equal to the sum of their limits in the same way limit x tend to a fx minus gx can be found out as limit x tend to a fx you know to find that first then put a minus sign and limit x tend to a gx so in order to find the limit of the difference of two function you need to find the limit of each function and find their difference third one limit x tend to a fx into gx it is equal to you need to find the limit of the first function fx into the limit of the second function gx so limit of the product of two functions is equal to the product of their limits and come with the fourth one limit x tend to a fx by gx a rational function p by q form fx by gx where fx and gx are two real value functions then you need to find in this way limit x tend to a fx the numerator limit you need to find divided by the denominator limit you need to find separately so the limit of quotient of two functions is equal to the quotient of their limits and come with the last property limit x tend to a k into fx where k is a constant in such a case you can take the constant outside and can find the limit of the function fx alone now we are going to do some problems based on the same how to find the limits of some function the first method is the direct substitution method for example we can do some problem find the limit of find the limit of the following functions the first question is limit x tend to 1 x square plus 1 divided by x plus 100 the first is the direct substitution method just to substitute the value for x as 1 here you get 1 square plus 1 divided by 1 plus 100 so 1 square is 1 1 plus 1 2 by 101 is the answer this is the direct substitution method then second question limit x tend to 2 x square minus 4 divided by x plus 3 okay we can make a direct substitution here 2 square minus 4 divided by 2 plus 3 equals 2 square is 4 4 minus 4 0 by 5 0 by 5 which is 0 come with the third question 
limit x tend to 1 h cube minus x square plus 1 okay making direct substitution 1 cube 1 minus 1 square 1 plus 1 so that 1 minus 1 0 so the final answer will be 1 this is the first method giving the direct value for the limit second is the factorization method we can discuss the question the first question limit section to 2 h cube minus 8 divided by x minus 2 the first aim is to make a substitution so substituting you get 2 cube minus 8 divided by 2 minus 2 2 cube is 8 8 minus 8 is 0 by 0 which is an indeterminate form which is indeterminate in such a case, when an indeterminate form arises during a substitution, in this case you try to find a factorization method. Here, I am going to make a factorization like this so that s cube minus 8 can be split up by using a cube minus b cube form. a cube minus b cube is 8 can be written as 2 cube divided by x minus 2. a cube minus b cube, the formula is a minus b in one bracket into a square plus a into b that is 2x plus b square is 4 the whole divided by x minus 2 is here you can see that while making a factorization this x minus 2 x minus 2 get cancelled so the factor which makes the numerator and denominator get cancelled when making a factorization that is why we use factorization method when a limit does not exist or an indeterminate form. After cancellation, again you can substitute the value for x as 2 in this function. So the remaining now is equal to limit x tends to 2. Okay, after cancellation, you have the function as h square plus 2x plus 4. Substituting you get equal to 2 square is 4 plus 2 into 2 is 4 plus 4. So the answer is 12. This is the factor system method. So, when making a substitution, if you fail to find the value, you can make a factor system method. Come with one more example. Limit x tends to 2 s cube minus 2x square divided by x square minus 5x plus 6. Okay, at first we can make a substitution 2 cube minus 2 into 2 square divided by 2 square minus 5 into 2 plus 6. We can check 2 cube is 8 minus 4 into 2 is 8. So the denominator is, the numerator is 0 by the denominator is 2 square is 4. 4 plus 6 is 10. 10 minus 10 is 0. Again an indeterminate form. 0 by 0 an indeterminate form. In such a case what you want to do? You need to make a factorization. I am going to make a factorization in such a way that taking x square common from the numerator by. So x square common you get a x minus 2. The whole divided by. Denominator I am going to make a 2 linear factor. Since it is a quadratic polynomial. It can be split up as x minus 2 into x minus 3. So really you are not that. When substituting with x equal to 2, how 0 by 0 comes up? The factor which makes the numerator and denominator 0 is x minus 2. So when factorizing, that factor gets cancelled. x minus 2, x minus 2 gets cancelled. Now, in the remaining, you can make a direct substitution as 2 square divided by, again here x is 2, so 2 minus 3. 2 square is 4 by minus 1, so the answer is minus 4. Next, an important question. Find limit x tends to 1, x minus 2 divided by h square minus x minus 1 by h cube minus 3 h square plus 2x. At first, we can make the direct substitution we get, which implies when direct substituting, replace x with 1, you get 1 minus 2 divided by 1 square minus 1 minus 1 by 
1 cube minus 3 into 1 square plus 2 into 1. This is the direct substitution. So, anyway, the answer becomes minus 1 by 0 minus 1 by 1 cube is 1, 1 plus 2, 3, 3 minus 3, 0. Anyway, denominator when comes to 0, which is indeterminate. If an indeterminate form will come, the direct method is factorization method. Okay, I am going to make a factorization. I get limit x tends to 1. Here, the numerator is x minus 2 divided by the denominator. I am going to make a factorization by taking an x common into x minus 1, minus 1 by. From the denominator, I am going to take an x common. I get x square minus 3x plus 2. The next step is which implies limit x tends to 1, x minus 2 divided by x into x minus 1 minus 1 by x into x square minus 3x plus 2 can be split up as two linear factors x minus 1 into x minus 2. Summing you get minus 3, product you get plus 2. Next up is I am going to take an LCM here, limit x tends to 1. I am going to take an LCM here as x into x minus 1 into x minus 2 as an LCM in between these two denominator. So here comes with a x minus 2 into x, my, x into x minus 1 in the denominator. So you need to multiply with the an x minus 2 when taking the LCM minus. Here, 1 by x into x minus 1 into x minus 2 is the denominator. So, the numerator is 1 while taking the LCM. And next piece which implies or which is equal to limit x tends to 1. Here comes with a x minus 2 the whole square minus 1 divided by x into x minus 1 into x minus 2. The next piece equals limit x tends to 1. This can be split x minus by using a minus b the whole square. a square minus 2ab plus b square. This is a square minus 4x plus 4. A minus 1 also in the numerator. The whole divided by x into x minus 1 into x minus 2. Our aim is to eliminate the factor which makes the denominator 0. From this term it is clear that limit x tends to 1. When it becomes indeterminate, when the denominator comes with a factor as x minus 1, we need to eliminate that x minus 1. Here again an x minus 1 comes to the denominator. Our aim is to eliminate the x minus 1 in the denominator for to make it as a determinate form. Equals limit x tends to 1. This can be written as x square minus 4x plus 3 the whole divided by x into x minus 1 into x minus 2. Now I can eliminate the denominator as x into limit x tends to 1. Numerator can be split up as two linear factors x minus 1 into x minus 3. The whole divided by x into x minus 1 into x minus 2. Thus you are not that the term which makes the limit and determinate is x minus 1 that get cancelled after our simplification. x minus 1 x minus 1 get cancelled. Now, the remaining terms are limit x tends to 1, x minus 3 in the numerator by on the denominator x into x minus 2. No indeterminate terms remains in the denominator. Now, we can make a substitution. So, substitute you get 1 minus 3 divided by 1 into 1 minus 2. So, 1 minus 3 is minus 2 divided by 1 into 1 minus 2 is again minus 1. So, the answer is minus 2 divided by minus 1. So, the final answer is plus 2. A very important question. Next is the method 3. So, what method is? The direct substitution method. Method 2 is the factorization method. And method 3 is using some standard uh, limits. Standard limits means based on some theorem, we can find the limit of a function. Theorem is, let n be a positive integer. Very important theorem. Let n be a positive integer. Then, 
limited to n to a x raised to n minus a raised to n by x minus a equals n into a raised to n minus 1. This is the theorem. Let n be a positive integer. This theorem can be applied only when listen to the specialty of this one. x raised to n minus a raised to n. The same power n. x minus a. The same factor here and the same factor in the denominator also x minus a. Then the answer will be the power n into this a raised to power minus 1. This is the speciality of the theorem. The same power need to come. The same x minus a comes in the denominator. Then you can apply the theorem. As an example, we can do a limit. Evaluate. Suppose you are given with the limit as limit x to 2, x raised to 5 minus 32 divided by x cube minus 10. Suppose you are given with such a question. The method 1 is you know to make a substitution. When substituting you can find that replacing x with 2 you get 2 raised to 5 minus 32 divided by 2 cube minus 10. Anyway, 2 raised to 5 is 32 minus 32 is 0 by 8 minus 8 is 0, which is indeterminate. In such a case, indeterminate. In such a case, you may prefer method 2 in which you can factorize. But for factorization, it seems difficult for you for to factorize x raised to 5 minus 32. So we need to apply or we need to think about a standard limit. So that method 2 fails. So come with method 3. In such a case, if we arrange the limit like this, limit x tends to 2, x raised to 5 minus, the 32 can be written as 2 raised to 5 divided by h cube minus, the 8 can be written as 2 cube. Now, which is of the form? This can be think of the form x raised to n, the same power minus a raised to n, the same power n comes here. Divided by the same factor x minus a comes in the denominator. But the same factor x minus 2 is not in the denominator. So I am going to make a further arrangement like this. Equals limit x tends to 2. x raised to 5 minus 2 raised to 5 divided by. Remember if you can find or apply the limit or the given limit is in this form. Limit x tends to 2, suppose the limit is in this form, limit x tends to 2, x raised to 5 minus 2 raised to 5 divided by x minus 2. Then you can apply the above theorem. Why? Because the same x minus 2 comes at the factor in the denominator. Then only you can apply the theorem. But in this question, the denominator is not x minus 2, it is given as a cube minus 2 cube. So, we need to arrange this way x raised to 5 minus 2 raised to 5 divided by, I am going to divide the numerator with x minus 2, the whole divided by. This numerator I am going to divide with x minus 2. Now my denominator x cube minus 2 cube is there, that also I am going to divide with the x minus 2. So there may not happen a change in the value, why? Because when taking the reciprocal, of the second fraction and multiply, you can see that the denominator x minus 2, x minus 2 get cancelled. So, the given term or the given limit, you need to arrange it this way. Now, which is of the form, which you can split up as equals limit x tends to 2. You can apply the limit in the numerator at first. Why? Because limit x tends to a fx by gx equal to limit x tends to a fx by limit x tends to a gx. So, Separate limits you can apply x raised to 5 minus 2 raised to 5 divided by x minus 2. The numerator you need to find the limit. The whole divided by the denominator also you need to find the limit x tends to 2 s cube minus 2 cube divided by x minus 2. Now you can apply the more result. Why? Because now the denominator is of the form x raised to 5 minus 2 raised to 5 divided by the same x minus 2 factor comes to the denominator. And here also, x cube minus 2 cube divided by the same x minus 2 comes to the denominator. So you can apply the both theorem on the numerator as well as on the denominator. I am going to apply the 
theorem on the numerator we get which is equal to limit x tends to 2 x raised to n minus a raised to n by x minus a form the power 5 into a raised to n a here is a 2 For power 5 into 2 raised to 5 minus 1 this is the answer of the numerator by applying the above standard limit divided by here the power 3 into a raised to what is the value of a here a is 2 the power 3 into a raised to power minus 1 this is the limit in the denominator by applying the both theorem in both the numerator and the denominator now the answer is 5 into 2 raised to 4 divided by 3 into 2 square again a 2 square cancel with the 2 square here remaining is 5 into 2 square divided by 3 equal 2 square is 4 4 into 5 20 20 by 3 is the answer next question evaluate limit x to 1 x raised to 15 minus 1 by x raised to 10 minus 1 the first method is the standard method the direct substitution if you substitute with the value for x as 1 you have 1 raised to 15 minus 5 1 by 1 raised to 10 minus 1 again comes as 0 by 0 which is indeterminate so first method fails if first method fails you need to think about the second method which is factorization in the second method for the factorization of x raised to 15 minus 1 raised to 15 that is impossible for you now you need to think about any standard theorem yes we can apply the above theorem in which I am going to arrange the given limit as limit x tends to 1 x raised to 15 minus 1 raised to 15 which is of the form x raised to n minus a raised to n divided by the same x minus 1 need to come in the denominator so I am going to divide with an x minus 1 for the numerator as well as for the denominator the denominator is x raised to 10 minus 1 raised to 10 the same x minus 1 need to come to the denominator here both can be cancelled therefore the given limit can be arranged as limit x tends to 1 x raised to 15 minus 1 raised to 15 divided by x minus 1 the whole divided by the applying limit in the denominator x tends to 1 x raised to 10 minus 1 raised to 10 divided by x minus 1 Yes, again we can come to the theorem x raised to limit x tends to a x raised to n minus a raised to n divided by the same x minus a if it comes to the denominator the answer is the power n into this a raised to power minus 1. This is the result. Okay, now the numerator is the format equals x raised to 15 minus a raised to 15 divided by x minus a. So the answer is the power 15 into what is the value of a here here a raised to 15 a is 1 so power 15 into a raised to 15 minus 1 the power minus 1 the whole divided by on the denominator also x raised to n minus a raised to n by x minus a the power 10 into what is the value of a here here also the value of a is 1 so power 10 into 1 raised to power minus 1 equal 15 into 1 raised to n number is 1 divided by 10 into 1 raised to n number is 1 15 by 10 which can be cancelled with it 2 or oh sorry 5 you get 3 by 2 next comes with a very important question evaluate limit x tends to 0 root of 1 plus x minus 1 by x at first we can think about the direct substitution method when substituting you can see that root of 1 plus 0 that is 1 minus 1 0 by 0 and determinate form if the first method fails you need to think about the second method the factorization method here the factorization seems to be tough as they arise with the root so we need to think about the third method that is the theorem method the theorem states that limit x tends to 0 or limit x tends to a x raised to n minus a raised to n divided by x minus a form we need to get. For to apply the theorem, I am going to arrange the given limit as by making a substitution put 1 plus x equals y. A very important question. 1 plus x equals to y. Substitution method then applying the limit. Whenever you make a substitution in the given limit question, 
you need to change the limit to so don't forget that whenever you make a substitution for the question in the limit you need to make a change in the limit to so put 1 plus x equal to y if 1 plus x equal to y our limit is x tends to 0 what happens when x tends to 0 when x tends to 0 therefore as x tends to 0 what happens to y y tends to 1 plus 0 1 plus 0 that is y tend to 1 now we need to change the limit therefore the given limit becomes therefore the given limit becomes therefore the given limit becomes what happens to the given limit limit x tend to 0 becomes limit y tend to 1 instead of the x tend to 0 you can substitute with y tend to 1 limit y tend to 1 root of 1 plus x so 1 plus x can be replaced with y so root of 1 plus x can be replaced with the root y minus 1 divided by need to replace this x also all the variables now change to y so what happens to the x x becomes equal to y minus 1 y minus 1 i hope you understand whenever i make a substitution you need to change all the variable to a single variable now limit y tends to the given limit becomes limit x tends to 0 becomes limit y tends to 1 root of y minus 1 divided by y y minus 1 this we can arrange it as limit y tends to 1 root of y can be written as y raised to 1 by 2 minus 1 raised to 1 by 2 divided by y minus 1 which is of the form limit x tends to a x raised to n minus a raised to n divided by x minus a form limit x tends to a this is your a x raised to n minus a raised to n divided by x minus a the same a comes here then what about the result the power 1 by 2 into a raised to what is your a here a raised to power minus 1 equal 1 by 2 into 1 raised to minus 1 by 2 half minus 1 is minus 1 but 1 raised to any power even if it is positive or negative 1 raised to any power is 1 so the answer is 1 by 2 into 1 is 1 by 2 very important result actually application of theorem but we need to make a substitution come with a similar question find limit x tend to 0 x plus 1 the whole raised to 5 minus 1 by here also when making the direct substitution you will get the answer of the indeterminate form 0 0 now for to make a factorization as the power is 5 it seems to be impossible so think about this theorem for this theorem i am going to apply or put a substitution put this x plus 1 i am going to substitute it as y whenever you make a substitution you need to change the limit so as x tends to 0 what happens to y when x tends to 0 y becomes equal to 0 plus 1 which is 1 so as x tends to 0 y tends to 1 therefore the given limit becomes therefore the given limit becomes the given limit becomes limit instead of the x tends to 0 you can take it as y tends to 1 x plus 1 can be put now the variable change to y so you need to replace all the variables to y in the given question so y x plus 1 can be replaced with a y so y raised to 5 minus 1 divided by here an x that also you need to change x plus 1 equal to y implies x equal to y minus 1 x equals y minus 1 so replacing the denominator with y minus 1 now this you can arrange as limit y tends to 1 y raised to 5 minus 1 raised to 5 divided by y minus 1 which is of the form limit a y tends to a y raised to n minus a raised to n divided by y minus a. The answer is now we can apply the theorem. The answer is the power 5 into a raised to a here is 1 raised to power minus 1 equals 5 into 1 raised to 4 is 1. So the answer is 5. very important but special case question are these two questions.